another spicy recipe today, a favorite chili condiment from my childhood from Singapore and Malaysia. <laughs> Hey Lynn's Foodies, I'm Aslin Bloor from linsfood.com as well as singaporeanmalaysianrecipes.com. So today's recipe is sambal belacan. It is a spicy chili paste because it looks like a paste, chili paste that is used as a condiment on the dinner Table. And it is also very commonly found at food stalls as an add-on condiment, much like you would have mayo, ketchup, mustard when you're dining out. So what is sambal belacan? Let's do one word at a time. Sambal. There is no direct translation for this Malay Indonesian word, sambal. It refers to thick paste like this that's used as a condiment. It also refers to condiments that are made up of chopped up ingredients like sambal mata, which is the Indonesian raw onion salsa, I call it, from the island of Bali, link up there. It also refers to side dishes, whether they are, they are sauces, sauce-based side dishes like sambal tumis, Sambal, what is porn in Malay? Sambal udang. And it also refers to certain stir fries like sambal goreng that's made up of vegetables and tempeh or tofu. So that's sambal. It, can, it usually refers to something spicy. Now, belacan. Belacan is quite possibly one of the world's smelliest ingredients. It is shrimp paste. And it is dried shrimps, fermented, turned into a paste, and then fermented some more. It stings to high heaven. But oh boy, I love it. And it's a very, very dark sh brown shade of brown and grey. It is an essential ingredient in many parts of Southeast Asia. So belacan in Malay, as it's known in Singapore and Malaysia. Terasi in Indonesian and kapi in Thai. So sambal belacan also exists in these two countries. In Singapore and Malaysia, it is called sambal belacan in Malay. In Indonesia, it's called sambal terasi. And in Thailand, it's called nam kapi. How do we use it? Sambal belacan is basically a condiment on the dinner table. If you're having rice and you're having a little curry or some some soup or some fried fish, you'd, you'd put a little bit, a spoonful of the sambal on the side of your plate and have a little bit with every mouthful. That's how it's traditionally eaten. And what I also sometimes do, because I almost always have this in the fridge, is because it contains shrimp paste, which is an essential ingredient in so much of our cooking, I also use it as a quick cooking ingredient. So if I'm, I'm frying up some vegetables or if I'm frying up some noodles or if I'm frying up some rice alongside the onion and garlic and perhaps even ginger, I'll add a teaspoon, two teaspoons or more of sambal belacan for added depth and spice, of course. So sambal belacan, I see it very often described as a Malaysian recipe. Okay, it is Malaysian, but it is also Singaporean. So as a Singaporean, I find that extremely annoying because 
It is a Malay recipe. Not a, necessarily, not specifically a Malaysian recipe. So it is a Singaporean Malay recipe. It is a Malaysian Malay recipe. The difference between Malay and Malaysian. Malay refers to the race and the language spoken. Malaysian refers to the nationality. So the color of your passport, like British, American, that kind of stuff. Okay, mini rant over. So let's get back to the recipe itself. So all you need to make sambal belacan, red chilies, shrimp paste, lime, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of sugar. That's it, five ingredients, red chilies, shrimp paste, lime, as in the juice and peel, salt and sugar, that's all. So traditionally, your red chilies, oh wait, let's just talk about the type of chilies. So you can use any red chilies you like in this. I've got some standard nondescript red chilies I picked up from the Korean supermarket. I've got some scotch bonnets too. So if you want to add scotch bonnet to it, make it super spicy, you can. Traditionally, we would quite often make this with Thai bird's eye chilies. That's pretty common. Traditionally, this would be made in a pestle and mortar. So you would start off with pounding the chilies coarsely, then you add the shrimp paste, and then you add the lime juice, the sugar and salt, and finally, grate a little bit of the lemon peel into your sambal blachan, and that's it, you're done. To use shrimp paste, what we do first of all is we dry toast our shrimp paste. We just basically, all you're going to do is to take a little bit of it, add it to your frying pan over medium low heat, heat it up for about five minutes to essentially deepen the flavor of the shrimp paste before using it. That's the standard method of using shrimp paste. Now, my granny would actually just burn the shrimp paste over, a, over the fire on her gas stove. Whether you're using a metal trivet or you just use a fork specifically for that purpose, you'll see it. I'll show you my granny's method in the video also. So the limes used in making sambal belacan. Traditionally, we would use this tiny little calamondin or calamansi limes called limau kasturi in Malay. So this is the lemon juice we would traditionally use, but not always the easiest thing to get outside of Asia perhaps. So any Persian lime will suffice. If you are lucky to have access to kafir limes, I've got two fruit left on my beloved kafir lime plant. If you have access to the actual fruit, the zest of the cafe lime will add incredible aroma and flavor to your sambal blachan. Cafe lime leaves, cafe lime are also traditional ingredients all over Southeast Asia. Many people identify the cafe lime or makrut lime as a Thai ingredient, but it's not really. It is an essential ingredient in most of Southeast Asia. So there you go. Let's go make us some sambal belacan.